to be merciful to us in this meeting this second day of the conference merciful enough to release his power and his grace no you don't have to be silent you open up your mouth and cry the prayer of mercy is usually displayed in a cry is usually expressed in a cry when but miles heard that jesus was in town he cried son of david have mercy on me until he has mercy on us can you cry to him lord be merciful to us lord be merciful to us send forth your power in this place release every soul that is oppressed under chains and bondage set the captives free heal the sick deliver the oppressed fill the hungry quench the thirsty let us experience liberty in your presence for a visitation tonight let your word come with power with grace making wise the simple bringing understanding to our minds bringing us to the revelation of the hope of your calling the glorious riches of your inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of your power to us who have belief Lord let there be deliverance let your power be showcased in this place let everyone leave this place a vessel of your power impact our lives change our stories ignite our destinies let your name be glorified in Jesus name we shout a big amen God bless you. Please be seated in the presence of God. Please pick your Bibles. Let's journey into the Word of God. We take the Word of God very serious in this place and we take our time for the unraveling, the revealing of the Word of God because therein lies our hope. Therein lies the build up of our faith. For faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I believe that whatever God will do will be activated through the power of His word. Hebrews 1 verse 3 says, He upholds all things in King James translation by the word of His power. And I trust the Lord be glorified. So please be patient. Listen tonight something that will really enlighten us and empower us in the days ahead. Once more, I want to bring us greetings from my father in the Lord, Apostle Jonathan Shokonya of Family Worship Experience International. 
I know many of us know him on social media. Um, he prayed for us and he has released his blessings and his love to us for this meeting. And um, also bring us greetings from one of our own fathers in the land, Reverend Sunday Daniel. Uh, please can we honor God for him? Amen. I was with him earlier in the week, prayed and declared over the meeting and he's on the trip right now but he told me his heart is with us and his prayer is with us in this place and i believe that the heavens are open i want to share on something tonight that i titled the governmental church i want us to listen tonight because god will it may sound simple you know, I believe in revelations, but I also believe that the wisdom of God is displayed in simplicity. It may sound simple to some of us, but I believe it's a wake-up call and a strategy revealed by the Holy Spirit to the church and the body of Christ on how we can appropriate the coming revival. I believe that we are already in the season of the last day revival. How long it will last, I don't know. But I believe it will usher the church uh, it will prepare the church and usher us to the season of the coming of the Lord. And this revival is not just going to be Holy Spirit centered alone. I believe it's going to be a partnership between the Holy Spirit and the church. And we began to learn about the place of preparation in partnering with God for a move. I was touched when I saw... Um, the altar call here i believe those were music ministers and all of that and the lord just put on my heart you know that people come to meetings and receive a lot they receive the word receive an impartation of the presence and the grace of god and the power of god but we are lacking to an extent in how to sustain the things we receive from god and so tomorrow i want to share on what i titled sustaining the next move of god that's tomorrow's message it's not prepared the holy spirit just dropped it on my heart i've really not been preaching prepared messages all through this conference because i want us to hear what god is saying uh, so tomorrow i trust that god will help us by his word to receive keys that will help us sustain what we have received and build ourselves to a point of mastery and stature the things of the spirit can be mastered i've told us at the beginning of this conference that you don't generalize limitations and truly it is my assignment by the grace of god as an apostle to his body to ensure that i play my part along with other vessels that god has raised both those higher than us those of our level and those that are coming after us to ensure that the body of christ is properly discipled into kingdom truths that will help her to be sustained in relevance and in dominion as far as the program of god is concerned on earth if you are with me on that say amen, amen. so that's the reason why again and again we bring the word of god it's not just a sermon a formula is being revealed some of you will live years after and need to come back to these messages to these meetings to receive strategies because these are keys that will unlock the move of god over territories and over nations so i really really like our hearts to be open and that's why being called to ministry is a very serious assignment you have to ensure that you labor very well to bring the body of christ because the bible calls us the ground and the pillar of truth it's time for ignorance to depart in the body of christ it's time that we stop chasing shadows it's time for us to hold on to the substance and the real thing and the lord be glorified in jesus name but once again i also celebrate every worker the pneumatic workforce of SGNI. Can we clap for them, please? I just 
I thought to do that and I almost forgot. I want to say a big thank you to all the workers for the sacrifice of putting up this meeting. As easy as you see everything and as calm as you see everything, a lot of work has been put in. Some of them didn't return back since morning. And I want every one of you to know that we love and we honor you. And God alone can reward your sacrifice. And that's why I'm happy that only God can reward. So worship team, ushering department, media department, protocol and security. How many of you like the security outfit around? And everything. And I just want to appreciate every department and thank you for what you are doing. For modeling service to God's people. God bless you. In Jesus name. I don't know if next year we can do two days in the morning. Based on your capacity anyway. Amen. The governmental church. Let's do two scriptures. Isaiah 9 verse 6. You know, this is my habit. At any point you are tired of my talking, please just wave your hand. And then we'll stop talking and then we'll pray. Alright? It's a privilege to minister. So if I take your time too much, just wave your hand and tell me, okay, your talk is too much. We are sleeping now. So, Is that okay? Please be free. Okay? Can we read together? I want to go. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. Okay, read for the benefit of the popularity of that verse, the remaining part of the verse. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Let's go to verse 7. And of the increase, I believe, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice, from that time forward, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. That zeal is coming on someone tonight in Jesus' name. So from this scripture, we see that God's intention was originally to establish his kingdom on the earth. God created the earth uh, to become a material expression of his kingdom, his rule, and his government kingdom is the system and the style of god's rule and god's government and so it is important that every believer be disciple to understand what kingdom is all about like the worship team taught us but that's not the focus of this conference the bible says this kingdom because when god started to walk with men he found a man called abraham caught a covenant with that man Many years later, a descendant of that man called David became God's first choice king over Israel. Now remember that the earth was supposed to be a colony, an expression of the rule and the government of God. So in order for God to outplay this, he looked for a nation that will become a prototype, an experiment of his kingdom and how it is governed and how and how it is systemized from the heavens somebody say kingdom so israel was that nation that he will use physically as an example and so god caught a covenant with israel and when david became king his throne was to mirror the throne of god in heaven that's the reason why he says of the increase of this throne of david there will be no end and god will establish it because it was not just about david it was about a throne, a higher throne that he reflected on earth. God wants to be seen as Lord and King over the nations. Yes, he is King of kings and Lord of lords. But his lordship and his dominion would take a process to be enacted and to be established on the earth. If you are with me, say Amen. So go back to verse 6. The Bible says one very striking sentence there is that the government will be upon his shoulder. You will understand this scripture when you begin to read it through the lens of the New Testament. 
in the New Testament Jesus died was raised and ascended to heaven and the Holy Spirit was re released to the disciples and the church was established the church was supposed to be God's body God's agency on the earth to supervise the advancement and the establishment of his kingdom when you want to build a house it's okay to go to an architect and receive the plan the architect in this equation was Jesus because all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made that's the reason why he had to in our redemption he had to figure us in Christ somebody say in Christ so we are in Christ because that's the blueprint so but after the architect finishes the designs of what you intend to build the next thing is to look for a civil engineer the civil engineer tells you how possible it will be interprets the plan of the architect and then begins to look for the contractor the quantity surveyor every other person that will go to work but even after that the civil engineer may not always be on site so you need somebody on site that will supervise the construction from a to z they call them the foreman in some cases the contractor so this person receives the interpretation of the original plan from the civil engineer the quantity cost of materials and everything and his job is to ensure that all the workmen are brought together the resources are deployed to get everything exactly and to ensure that what was drawn in a paper becomes a standing reality in this equation the work the, the, the foreman is the church so let's try to interpret this scripture because you will not understand government upon his shoulder you may think it's just this shoulder so let's try to interpret this scripture from the lens of the new testament if you are okay with the teaching please say amen, amen. if you think we are talking too much it's time to stop can you say hallelujah all right ephesians chapter 1 from verse 16 we'll read down to verse 23 just so that we can get the context tonight if you understand what we will do if you understand this teaching this night you will live with a secret of not only how to kickstart a revival but how to sustain it anywhere because i believe revival is no longer an event revival is a person Mm -hmm. do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation which is what I'm teaching with now in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling this is why he released the spirit of wisdom and revelation not power yet see god is a technocrat is a master craftsman god is a god of intelligence yes he can work with unintelligent people but god in his ways very intelligent everything he does is governed by systems laws and ordinances that he has created and it is important through the ministry of his spirit in partnership with the word that every believer is brought into the understanding and the craftsmanship of his ways so that without him being present we can replicate his results on earth what a god we serve you know they say democracy is government of the people by the people and for the people on paper yet to be in reality isn't it so it's a government that is a system of government that empowers the people 
that makes that doesn't look at the people as subjects it looks at the people as leaders and one of the greatest ways to lift an economy from recession is people empowerment when you are able to utilize the abundant human resources because every nation that is very populous has abundant human resources which should be the greatest resources that should be tapped into because the ability of one man's mind is more than all the mineral resources in nigeria do you understand what i'm saying so god releases the spirit of wisdom and revelation to patiently guide us into the know-how of his ways and this is the course content he says that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened understanding there is your mind because god needs to cooperate with your mind for what he wants to do on the earth how did he teach us to pray in matthew he said your kingdom come how your will be done in earth as it is where in heaven this man i want to talk to you i pray i don't forget i had a vision about you this afternoon okay can i are you going to use yourself okay stand there i saw in a vision because i didn't know why i prayed for you in the morning then when i laid down my bed to rest this afternoon because i did rest say amen, amen. i saw a hand press a button and on the button was written reset god is resetting your life that's what he said that's your word i saw the angel of the lord press a reset button and god says tell him that's exactly what's happening in his life after this conference you know what it means to reset something to start it at fresh and what god will do is he will take the opportunities that were lost and he will bring it before you for i will restore to you the years that the canker worm has eaten you can't go back into the past but because jesus is the same yesterday today and forever he will bring your past into your present and help you walk in with a grand style and there's going to be an investment of the spirit of wisdom on your life because god told me that one of the reasons why there have been many cycles i don't know you so much but one of the reasons why there have been many cycles in your life is not because you don't love god but it's because in certain seasons of your life you have been insufficient of the wisdom that is needed but today god is releasing the spirit of wisdom i'm reading a scripture the spirit of wisdom and god said no you talk to him okay and i declare that reset in the name of jesus everything that was lost is being restored and get ready because god is going to make a giant out of you a wonder and a sign you will be to your family first to your lineage first and then to your generation and i don't know if it has ever been confirmed to you but i now i just see there's a fire that will come on you somewhere in this conference because there is a strange anointing of an evangelist on your life in the name of jesus it be done no don't sit down i don't want it's not time for ministration so you can go do what you want i just thought to say that that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe these are the things that he wants you to know the hope of his calling why you were called because every one of us have been called out the word church in the greek means the called out ones it says we have been called out of every tribe and kindred and tongue revelations 5 9 to 10 and has made us unto our god kings and priests that we will rule and reign but he called us from somewhere but you need to understand the purpose for why you were called even salary earners are excited when there is an insurance scheme for their pension 
because it secures their future yes or no and so that's your pension there that you will know the hope of your calling why did you decide to raise me in this family with all my limitations as an evangelist that you will know the hope of your calling you know the bible says hope make it not ashamed hope is a sustainer you can go through certain trials and tribulations in your life and if you don't have a knowledge of the hope ahead you may die before the breakthrough comes it says let us not be weary in well doing for in due season we will reap our reward if we faint not but there are people who faint but the hope the knowledge of the hope of your calling keeps you alive even when situations that should faint you have come that's the reason why the apostles could not die until it was their time because they knew the hope that's the reason why the missionaries that brought the gospel to africa and many of them died days after their arrival i i, I remember the writing of david livingstone story had it that david livingstone one of the christian missionary explorers that explored the african continent he toiled without seeing bumper harvest in fact it was said that he saved only one soul at a particular time of his life it was like laboring without result and he made a statement before he died he said that right now we have labored without results wandering in the dark he said but a time will come when others will labor in our path and they will reap a bumper harvest he said when that time come may those ones may those laborers not forget we who were the watchmen of the night and today the continent of africa is expanding as far as the gospel is concerned in fact exporting the gospel back to the world so but there was a season where somebody labored you know jesus said i have called you to reap where you didn't sow he said others have labored and you have entered into that means there are two sets of workmen in the kingdom there are those who will labor seek time and leave not seeing the harvest and then there are those who will come to command the harvest we need to honor the combination of both so that in case god has called you to be the the former this is a word of hope to you you are not laboring to see what will last your lifetime you are laboring for something that will become a legacy that will be passed down to generations ahead it doesn't matter where, wherever god has called you to labor some of you god has called you to labor as intercessors very quiet ministry can i tell you something for years i was an intercessor i didn't even know anything about being an apostle i didn't really have spiritual encounters early enough in my work with god i'll share a little of my life tomorrow i didn't know anything about that and when he came i thought god missed the wrong age. this is a missed call because what's the meaning of apostle so i had to go and look for a book and start reading okay i didn't even understand after reading the book and then god told me that's the reason why i hid it from you for five years now then so wherever god has called you to labor may god reveal to you the hope of your calling so that you can spend your life for him and never lose hope or be faint in the days of adversity now and what is the greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he walked in christ this is another thing god wants us to know the working of his power not just his power the working of his power not just his power the working of his power the greatness and the working of his power if he wants you to know the working of his power is because he's looking for a participant so that you too can walk that power that's why there's a gift of the spirit called the workings of miracles it's you that will walk it it is what you do in the physical that will translate with a pattern in the spirit being revealed and then miracles will happen do we understand that 
which he walked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. So this was the first example of that power. He raised Christ from the dead. So you need to go and understand what happened at re resurrection. To understand the power that God has embedded in us to walk in. Because Jesus did not resurrect himself. He was a dead body. He did not come back to life. The Bible says he was raised in Romans 6 verse 4. He was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Another life came into him and quickened him. Understanding that procedure makes you a bona fide participant and partaker of the power. And my God, a power that can raise a dead body can do anything. Can shake nations. Can shake kingdoms. I'm not hearing your amen again. Amen. Can transform territories. Because that is the end now. Which he, raised, which he walked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age but also in that which is to come. This is now the point of our interest. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. That means his headship over all things is exercised through the church. To be head over all things to the church. Understand that. Which is his body. The church now is talking about the church. Which is his body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. The body of who? Christ. Is who? The church. Give us verse 23 message translation if you have it. I want to show you something. The church you see is not peripheral to the world that means it's not external to the world it's not the world first before the church the world is peripheral to the church that has to do with god's dealings he said the church is christ's body in which he speaks and acts by which he fills everything with his word. this is the mandate of the church what does he do with the church he speaks through the church he acts through the church and he feels everything for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the lord as the waters and when he's talking about the church he's not just talking about all of us believers alone he's also talking about individual members that as you stand with this body you now appreciate the verse that says but a body has thou given me so you stand with this body one head two hands and two legs and the bible says you are god's body and through you he speaks through you he acts through you he feels everything that's why it's not an option for every believer to be a carrier of the presence of god because you are a dispenser the bible calls us in second corinthians chapter 3 verse 5 to 6 it calls us ministers of the new covenant i read it years ago in another translation he used the word dispensers what is a dispenser how many of you have water dispenser at home nobody in this place okay how many of you have seen a water dispenser what is there looking at using a water just touching a button and water comes out now that is the same word that was used for minister when he said we are ministers of the new covenant not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter killeth but the spirit giveth life we are replace the word minister with dispensers the word minister is becoming too bogus we are dispensers we are carriers we are releasers we are givers of life i have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly why should we have it in abundance because we are to be carriers and dispensers of that life somebody say amen, amen. you need to know what that life can do that is a life that touches dead things and turns it back to life even god who quickens the dead and cause those things that are not that is a light that is a life that shines out the darkness 
that is a life that converts sorrow into joy that is a life that replaces ashes for beauty that is a life that reveals the mystery of bringing glory out of death that what you suffered was actually the working of your glory for our light affliction which is but for a moment second corinthians 3 4 17 work it for us a far more exceeding weight of glory that is to be revealed why we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are unseen for the things which are unseen which is in us are, are permanent are eternal so the church the bible tells us in ephesians 1 verse 23 is his body and through that church he speaks he what acts and he what fills everything with his presence now let's go back to isaiah 9 verse 6 unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulder now you can understand what it means the government the rule of his kingdom the advancement the operation of his kingdom the workings of his power everything expressed by his kingdom will happen on the platform called his shoulder your shoulder to your arm symbolizes strength as far as your body is concerned in fact every time the bible referred to the power of god he usually will refer to it as the arm of the lord is that not so so shoulder is a place of strength it's a place of power you put heavy load there the most heavy things you can carry where do you put it on your shoulder and that's the reason why when god appeared to abraham in genesis chapter 12 the bible says god revealed himself to abraham in a place called Sichem or shechem and the word shechem means shoulder and the government shall be on his shoulder and the government shall be established through the demonstration and the revelation of his power that's what it means so when we talk about the governmental church the governmental church is the church that understands the truth of kingdom advancement on the earth through a revelation of power and authority influencing the spheres with the person and the message of christ a governmental church is the church that understands believes the power of god that is not able to save alone but is able to enforce the dominion of the kingdom of god on earth the governmental church is a church that understands that god is king in heaven but must be enthroned as Lord on the earth on all spheres and stratas of life. And it will happen through a systematic understanding of the revelation of his power and his authority as allocated to the church. That is the governmental church. So in bracket, another title for the message today is the government upon his shoulders. what is government government is the body with the power to make and enforce laws that regulate and control a country land area people or organizations the body that is empowered to make and enforce laws see why we're talking about the shoulder here the arm even in government there is something called the arms of government the three arms of government what are they legislature judiciary and the executive arm 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 power somebody say power come on shout it like you are expecting something that's the governmental church that they know that it will only be possible for jesus to be lord on earth that prayer that Paul made, made in Philippians 2 is not yet a reality. That every knee should bow. This is something that should happen. It is settled in heaven, but it is yet to be revealed on earth. 
That's why God gave him a name that is above every other name. That at the name Jesus. So it's not just about calling the name. That name Jesus is a code. The code of an operation. When military people go for operations, they code it with names. Operation this. Operation that. And that name reveals to you the workings of an entire operation within a theater of war. And until terrorism is flushed out of that place, that operation is still enforced. So the word Jesus, the name Jesus is a code. It's an operation code for this theater we call the earth. That at the name Jesus, every knee, when we understand the message and the person and the power of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every tongue, even the tongue of an atheist that doesn't believe God, will yet confess how possible, humanly it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. But it takes a governmental church to bring it. You see the role that you and I have to play. So we should quit depending on God for everything. Now God is at a mercy. As far as his advancement on earth and his lordship is concerned, he is at the mercy of the church. Because he limited himself to a body. If he was a spirit, when he was as a spirit on the earth, he could feel everywhere. But now that he decided out of love to be married to us, that love came with a sacrifice of limiting himself. So it is based on the expression we give him that he will accommodate. You know, sometimes. Have you discovered that there are times where you talk with people who are close to you and you tell them something you want to do and they know it's not a good idea. But maybe because they respect you or they don't want to argue with you or they see that you are someone who is strong on your will. They say, oh, okay, it's good, it's good. Have you seen those? Have you, have you experienced that before? And then a wise person will probe into that and say, no, 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 no. This, especially between husband and wife. What is it? Talk, what is it? No, 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 no problem. Guess what? The Holy Spirit does that too. The Holy Spirit does that too. That's why if he tells you yes, probe that yes. Because the Bible tells us that God got fought, fed up with a generation and he gave them up. I'm looking for an example in scripture. I'm looking for an example in scripture for this. Where God said yes to men, but he didn't mean that yes. Balaam, thank you sir. Thank you very much. Balaam. They, before they, when they came to him, God came in the night and said, don't go. Or before they came, God said, don't go. In the night, he went to pray. You've already heard, don't go. What are you going to pray for? God said, okay, I'm limited because you are my body. Go. But only say what I will tell you. How many times have we made decisions and you heard go from God and you truly meant go? When you heard that go from the Spirit of God, how did you feel in your heart? Because he will make your emotions interpret how he feels about that go. Sometimes the go may be, well, have your way. If, we, if God didn't say put up this meeting I would never try it by the grace of God you don't want to know the expenses the budget for this meeting but God is limited now because it is the expression we give him that will reveal him so the onus is on us to ensure we give an accurate expression and that's why the spirit of god has come to partner with the church he came as a friend but we must make him lord so that he can reveal the blueprint and give us the pattern the governmental church a church that understands power a church that understands authority and how to function and operate from that place there are several words for power in scripture but i'm concerned with just two one of them speaks of power as in potential the ability that can be converted into action ability that can be converted into into 
an event into an activity the bible says that ability is in us it calls it dunamis but another word speaks of the position it's not concerned about the ability it's concerned about the position it's concerned about the frame of reference the place of function so it's one thing to have the ability to function it's another thing to know the place from whence you function many people have the right ability but they are functioning from the wrong place so their grace is not being ex expended as it should be and may god not allow anyone under the sound of my voice waste your time may god not allow you to be where you are tolerated may he shift you to where you are celebrated some of you the ability in you is not coded for nigeria it's coded for australia no matter how you pray there will just be a little that will be manifested because one thing to have the power is another thing to function that's the reason why in as much as there are gifts of the spirit given to the church there are also gifts of christ or gifts of grace that now has to do with office of function administrative offices in the body of christ that will disciple the body of christ that have the gift to understand their position of function now these offices we call them fivefold offices but they are more than fivefold offices they are at they are they are they are organizations of their own for instance there is one minister of finance and a minister of state for finance isn't it but when you go to abuja you see a mighty building they call it ministry of finance and you have almost more than a thousand people working there or for instance you have an office they call office of the accountant general of the federation yet when you go there you see several people i thought it's the office for one man so when a man is called as an apostle is not just to come and equip the body of christ alone but his office is supposed to provide other offices for those with gifts to find expression so he can be an apostle but he's meant to model an office because there are worshipers that are apostolic worshipers so they need to contact that office so that they can be a perimeter for them to function because not every ngo is doing the same project So a man is called a prophet and we all think prophet is just about laying hands laying hands and calling names and phone numbers no, no 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 all those things see signs are meant for unbelievers the real uh, 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 duty of that man as a prophet is to disciple the body of christ within his spiritual jurisdictional authority to disciple them to understand the ways of God in dealing with the prophetic in other words how God communicates so under him you can have prophetic intercessors you can have prophetic worshipers you can have prophetic businessmen you can have prophetic evangelists you can have different gift expressions but his office provided a perimeter for their functioning A prophet that doesn't understand that is not yet mature to be called a prophet we do respect because the true ministry of a prophet if he passes through a territory at least for one year you should find pockets of expressions of people that can hear download and interact with the mind of god a prophet should interpret to you the system of the prophetic as far as heaven is consigned to business You see, that's the reason why you see me spend time to teach whether you are happy or not. It's because what's an apostle? What does it mean? Apostle is apostolos, it means a messenger. If I come here and just start praying and prophesying, I'm not fulfilling my calling. You will clap for me, but in heaven they didn't mark me. And is it you I will stand before on judgment day? So I've quit doing it for men. There's there's a blueprint. To know the hope of his calling because john the baptist did not 
do any miraculous sign yet jesus himself said of all men born of women there is none as greater so which scheme was used to mark him the governmental church brothers and sisters whether we like it or not there is only one word that we have that will make the world turn to us and listen to us in these last days it's called power we are living in a time where there is a mad rush to have control over systems and creation we are living in a time where there is a mad rush to know what can perform and the extent and the capacity of performance and that's why the last day church must be a governmental church we must understand power it must be a language on our lips it must be beyond people falling down in meetings it must be a curriculum we are disciples to understand we must know how to interpret it in our different spheres of influence we must understand how to function with authority as kings because the bible says it's possible for a prince to trek and for servants to ride on horses we must understand it's time for us to begin to have churches alive with the ministry of the power of God let it become something we we are not used to because we keep seeing the different layers and dimensions of it I believe if there is a power help this young man or excuse him to sit down quickly I believe if there is a power that can make people fall first question why do they fall now you know our response to the presence of God is different it's not just the anointing that makes people the anointing doesn't make people fall the anointing comes to perform it's the presence so if the Holy Spirit amplifies it here now there are some people because it is coming from a higher dimension if he amplifies that dimension here the energy level is too strong and some people cannot handle it so that's why you see some people stand and some fall the ones that stood it doesn't mean they are superior to the other it's just they are different the different technology in them responding to a higher civilization that is introduced that's the reason why nobody is falling now because it's not time for that yet the exceeding greatness of his power i believe if there's a power that can make people fall because the reason why people fall i've explained it to you but if there is a power that can make people fall that power should be also available to make them rise from circumstances and situations he says arise and shine amplify it says arise from the circumstances and the frustrations that you have been placed in shine for your light has come and the spirit entered into me and set me on my feet arise didn't mean that you will do it on your own no arise means i am activating a technology in you and from henceforth it is that power that is in you that will make you function on a level function on a frequency that is superhuman to you but normal with god what a mighty institution the believer is we must understand power there are too many sick people there are too many hungry people poverty is crippling the economy of nations i believe that we, the power of god is also available available i mean to say to change the economic climate on a nation we've just not understand the formula yet so we need a visitation of the spirit of wisdom and revelation then when we are properly discipled we can send people who are operating as businessmen that's their body just the way we are the body of christ we gave him expression we are his uniform on earth so also a man can put on the uniform of being an entrepreneur but he's going with a superior intelligence and he can do something to your business in three months it brings you out of debt it's possible but we are not seeing them yet because technocrats need to be trained in the body that's why we've not been able to sustain revival for long because we thought it was just about coming to church no it's a system of divine operation god wants to introduce us to the technology of the kingdom 
he wants us to function on on 10g not just even 5g what is 5g NG that will not kill birds. You understand? When you function in that capacity, you can be seated now looking at me and you can move in the spirit. Whilst you are listening, you can be taken in the spirit, transported miles away from here and engage in an, an activity and come back. You can function in that level of power and grace. And people will send you messages to pray for them. Your phone is off. But they will also send the answer to the prayer. Meanwhile, you had no knowledge of the prayer request. Why? Because you were doing business at another level. And the problem identified that there was something you carried that he had to answer to. Somebody say power. power. Authority. These are things we must understand. Very quickly before we pray. What will it take for us to function as men and women of power and authority that God will use to establish and advance His kingdom on the earth? What will it take to see to it that we become the platform that enthrones and exalts Christ and makes him the governor over the nations. What kind of men will be needed and used to bring this to pass? Three and then we'll pray. Number one, three or four, men of faith. Men of faith. God is at the mercy of our faith. The move of God is always at the mercy of our faith. And our faith is tied to our understanding of Him. Our understanding and our conviction of Him, of the integrity of His word and His power. Second Timothy he says in verse one and uh, chapter one, verse twelve, but I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded. That was a man about to die. Because in this same book, in chapter four, he says, I'm ready to be offered. He was in prison awaiting execution. Yet in prison, his convictions were not bound. He was in chains, but his convictions were free. He said, I know whom I've believed, and I'm persuaded. That's the faith that was introduced in a man called Abraham. Romans chapter 4, the Bible tells us, verse 20 and 21. It says, But he was strong in faith, regardless of the fact that his body was dead. Physically, it was impossible for God to bring it to pass. But he was strong in faith. What then is this faith? Because truly, if you know this faith we are talking about, you can be, you can be deployed by heaven as an instrument of power and authority on earth. You can change the climate in your spheres of influence. You can dethrone forces. You can enthrone. You can remove. You can plant. and be, We don't see that power again. He said, I've set you these days over kingdom and nations to root out and to destroy, to uproot and to tear down, to plant and to build. Yet, evil men are thriving in our days, stealing our money and going on bail to their house and nobody's doing anything about it. Nobody can talk. We don't see that power again. Where we see men like Ben Sinidaosa that through the decrees of their mouth, heaven was enforced on earth. The status quo was changed and the will of God, not every situation is the will of God though. There are many things we have confused to be God's will. God is crying in the spirit but there are few people that can hear him. It's not my will. For instance, say it's not the will of God that all men should perish. And there's an accident and in a bus of 18 christians everybody died was it his will that he would take them like that was it god's will that hunger will hit a nation and people begin to die because of lack of food is that god's will people he died for 
then he's wasting them what what, what will be the reward for that sacrifice if you call it a sacrifice every day there are people dying and going to hell in our streets and our neighborhood but god is at the mercy of his body because through that body he speaks and he acts he wants to act more but their, their revelation is limited their understanding is finite we need men of faith we need men of faith I studied revival history about a man called Reverend Jack Cole. Media, any of these guys I mentioned, if you can, just put their pictures on the screen. Jack Cole was a man of faith. I spoke about it in the morning. Reckless faith. I've studied many healing evangelists in the United States between the 1940s and the 1950s. But this one, was it was strange. That's a man that before he prays for a cripple, he will collect the crutches and break it and throw it away so what if the person doesn't walk you have to buy another crutch he was praying for a woman that had a tumor in her stomach and in Jesus name he blew the stomach two times Lord Lord and he asked her check is it there what if it, it, it expanded rather than shrinking and the woman, her, her undergarments fell out, according to the, the story. It, it shrinked immediately that her pants fell out. Man of faith. Men that did greater things for the kingdom. The Bible says, who through faith subdued kingdoms, conquered territories. He said, even women had their dead brought back to life. So women were not left out in the equation. I don't know about you but i think i have a legacy of faith from my parents i told the story always that when i was five years i was poisoned and i became deaf and dumb and insane medically ascertained i had to quit school and stay at home from morning to evening you go and find me at the trash bin there outside and not dust bin i mean the trash heap in a barracks you see me there reduced to nothing and the story had it that my i don't know if he's listening now my father and my mother came back one night and held their hands and said we can't be delivering people in the name of jesus and our child is like this this child must come back to the way god created him and they prayed that night i don't know how long but the story had it that in the morning i woke up and greeted them first deaf and dumb and every year that story keeps coming to my mind that a legacy of faith has been passed down so if tomorrow my child falls or has an accident and he dies straight i have to prove that faith he told timothy in second timothy chapter one he said i know the faith that was in you it was in your grandmother lois and your mother eunice he said and now i charge you stir up the gift of god that is in you which legacy will you create for your children so me have signed my life that i can't leave nothing short of the miraculous i can't how about a man called william branham mightily used in the prophetic he was the one who started this thing about telling people their streets where they live in fact according to apostle john Suleiman, he has not seen a prophet that accurate in the body of christ after william branham now that's a prophet talking william branham had an accident in his days where he began to preach false doctrine and people thought he had backslid it he didn't really backslide what happened was he touched a dimension of power that he had not been trained for which i will show you in the point and there is that that's why he says to know the exceeding greatness because if you don't know it the power can be so much and you want to be a god because all of a sudden you realize that anything you say will happen all of a sudden you realize that people see you and they stand up from wheelchairs all of a sudden you realize that people pray using your name it's not the name of jesus and things happen why will pride not come all of a sudden you get employed in an organization and in a, a short period of time you rise to the topmost rank the first person try you dies the second person paralyzed the third person leaves they say this guy is a, is a 
if you are not ready if you are not well trained you you will give in to pride that's what happened to william braham yet in that state of backsliding he had an accident his wife died he was halfway unconscious and then he asked his son who came to check them he said where's where's my wife called her name she says she's here he said put my hand on her this somebody about to die they put his hand on her his bones were broken he was damaged beyond repair and as soon as his hand came on the woman she jerked back to life did your bible not say the bones of elisha we are talking power this night i don't know what you have seen though but we have to press into god because this is the only language that separates us from the world the bible says in the days of his power the people shall be willing there's a level of power the devil sees and he advises the demons around we will waste time hitting on this guy let's catch other people before the year runs out you know we have blood to fill our bank with before the end of the year but if we face this guy by the time it's december some of our demons would have gone back to hell under chains because the bible says in the book of jude that there are some demons that are so wicked that god had to reserve them under chains of darkness so when you bind demons and send them to the outer darkness you are sending them to those chains of darkness till the day of judgment so we, we you see why we, we must not allow demons stay on our streets we, we must not allow demons stay in our territory you can shut down the lifespan of a demon on earth that's why jesus will always pray and say come out of him and enter into him no more that's a power available to us somebody say amen men of faith are you ready to dare the impossible are you ready to move according to the word of god like elijah did first kings chapter 17 I think it's in verse 2 or verse 5. God told him, get out of here and go to the brook of cherries. And there I will command ravens to feed you. Wait, wait, wait. Ravens. Uh, first of all, have you ever seen birds feeding human beings? Even parrots that seem to be close to human. Have you ever seen birds? You would think you didn't hear God. Somebody said, that's missed call. God cannot say that kind of thing. But Elijah knew the voice of God. And faith is where men are prompted by the word of God. When men move, when God speaks. Get out of here, go to the brook. And the birds will come to feed you morning and evening. And he left and went there. God came again in verse 8. He said, out of this place, I've commanded a widow to sustain you. A widow in famine, sustain me. At least send me to a business mogul that has reserve underground in his house a widow and he went to the widow and the widow said this is all we have oh he said no don't worry that rain that is scarce for three years is here so what the rain is supposed to do provide a harvest for you i will be as far as i'm here according to the word of god your harvest will be here Proced oh god you don't look this is, look at look at this he told i said he said the barrel of meal will not fail neither the cruise of oil run dry until the day god sends rain oil is gotten from a plant called olive you need to plant it it will grow after two or three years bear fruit you pluck the fruit take it to the um oil press they will crush the fruit some processes and bring out oil that is something that can happen in over three years Elijah say, I came by the mouth of God to make what should happen in three years happen in one day. That oil, will, the, the something supernatural will happen. You will plant and harvest and process the oil and it will continue there. I don't have time to talk about the wheat. So you see the extent of that miracle. That's why I told you that I believe in natural laws for business, but they are supernatural laws. I know a lot that can make you get money while you are not earning salary. While you don't need to live on that because that is not God's legitimate system. But in case the natural law fails, I know the one that can route you out. And in case you think I'm talking about sowing, it's not sowing because what if the person doesn't have anything to sow? What do you do? Somebody say power. So when we understand that law, even if there's no space for you in ministry, 
you can go and apply and enter an organization and activate that law and somehow do not keep coming to the organization and just when they think it's because of their their prowess they now want to retrench staff they retrench you and six donors remove their hand and i say no look for that guy look for that guy what you used to tell those donors come and tell them now no 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 no, no. say grace it's power men of faith moving at the prompting of god's word praying until something happens holding god to his word until rain falls holding god to his word until the dead comes back to life when will we have people of faith that will stand and dare mighty things for the kingdom today we have weak christians in church everybody's looking for a man of god right sir everybody's looking for prayers everybody believes in the prophet and they have a scripture for it believe in your prophet he said believe he didn't say pray he's believe he said believe no be so but you do your own prayer that men ought always to pray and not to faint he said get thee up for i hear the sound of the abundance of rain but there was no rain and they went on his knees and manufactured that rain by prayer and he said elijah was a man of like passions as we are and he prayed earnestly the prayer that makes you not give up even if it takes days or weeks until god moves that's what we are looking for somebody say men of faith may god raise and impart upon us the strange gift of faith in this place many of you it is your faith that will bring your family out of that bondage i'm telling you all they just need is somebody who dares to believe god above the, the norm above the consequences so that they can look to you all they need is one man to say i don't know how we got into this place but i believe that god is able to do exceeding abundantly somehow we will come out of this place there's a woman of God called Dr. Cindy Trim. She was born into a family that they were impoverished and broke. And by her prophetic words, she changed her family from poverty to a wealthy family. She became a senator, retired after senate and started ministry. You browse about her, Dr. Cindy Trim. You see all those prayer things she does. Women, God, they use women. Oh, let me tell you. <laughs> Ladies, God, they use women. I don't have time to talk about them in history men and women of faith can you in one minute pray and say lord do something to my life that makes my faith activate the faith of others that when people see me hope is assured that at my presence there is a change in situations i can't afford to live ordinary are you praying at all this is a revival meeting this is why we came while you are seated I don't know how I got to this point, oh God. But do something to my faith. Do something to my life. Activate in me the faith of the ancient. Power from above that can change circumstances. That can cast out a host of devils. That can readjust the climate over nations. God needs men of very faith. Women of very faith. Women that are able to challenge God and situations until there is a change. All the days of my appointed times, I will change. I will wait till my change comes. But people with faith that say, rather than waiting for change, I'm the one that will orchestrate that change because God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that is at work inside of me it's inside of me and right now god is activating it he's activating it he's activating it now faith to do the impossible faith to change the story of man faith to shake nations faith to bring fire from above faith to send revival over territories faith to confront the gates of hell for i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Men like Smith Wigglesworth, women like Catherine Coleman, Amy Sample McPherson, 
women that will arise like Deborah. He said, until I, Deborah, arose, a mother in Israel, a woman that rises in a generation where men are afraid, where men are afraid, things that men run from, a woman that will rise in faith and say, I dare to believe God. Oh God, raise such men. Oh God, lift such men. The nations are in need of such. You may be weak physically, but in God you are strong. He said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. You have to be tired of the status quo. You have to be angry at oppression. You have to be angry at bondage. You have to be angry at poverty. You have to be angry at the host of darkness. How long till our change comes? God is saying you are the change. You are the change. That's why you came to this conference. I raised you as my battle axe. I raise you as my mouthpiece. You are my battle axe and my weapon of war. That's why I sent you to that territory. That's why I sent you to that city. That's why I sent you to study that course. That's why I sent you to that organization. Let young men arise. Hallelujah. Please be seated. We are going somewhere. Number two, men that are dead to self, men that will walk in the power, the revelation of the power and the authority of the kingdom and establish that kingdom on the earth. And give God bona fide expression. There are also men that are dead to self. Having faith is good. You can move mountains. You can shake and conquer territories. But the Bible says in Proverbs 16. The second to last verse. It says he that had control over his spirit. Is more than he that taketh a city. Brothers and sisters, I want to let you know that your greatest enemy is self. It's not the devil. Until you learn to conquer that enemy, you may not be able to conquer a territory. One of the greatest battles that we can face is the battles with ourselves. Somebody says self. I told you one time, I said, what do you do when the enemy is you? As mighty as Paul the Apostle was, and God used him to do terrible and mighty things all over the world in his days. He said, I had this messenger of Satan, a thorn in my flesh. One way or the other, every human being struggles with that thorn. You are a mighty man outside. But this one thing makes you look like a pauper inside. Makes you look weak inside. It's the battle against self. And as far as God is concerned, the greatest conquest is the conquest of self. When we are able to bring self to death. 
when we are able to come out from the hold and the bondage of self when we are able to come out of the governing of self because the bible says in romans 8 verse 5 and 6 that those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh but those who live according to the spirit the things of the spirit for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace what's verse 7 because the carnal mind is enmity against God you see where you see the first time an opponent of God is mentioned not the devil the devil does not have the equal capacity to oppose God at the blast of his nostrils the devil can come to an end the one thing that the Bible puts side by side with God to challenge God is not the devil and the whole kingdom of darkness is actually something that is even living with us it calls itself for it is not subject to the law of God nor indeed can be next verse so then those who are in the flesh what does it mean to be in the flesh does it mean this body no it means self is the nature the human nature that makes you tend to its desires and its want with the goal of bringing you under control and subjection to it god did not create us to live under the control of our desires because desires are not stable desire is like a fire bright now dead later god gave us those things to be under our control to exercise them when needed for instance the desire to eat is in the human nature of every one of us so that through that desire you can nourish your body again and grow but now self wants to make you a slave to that desire so you eat every time then what is meant to nourish you becomes a destroyer it's called self sleeping is a good desire because you need to rest but when that desire wants to rule over you god did not create anything to dominate man he said let man have dominion when anything tries to dominate a man it is contrary to god's opinion contrary to god's rule and self the devil has found an enemy an ally with him You want to walk with God and exhibit His power on the earth? Walk in kingdom authority and legislate over nations and territories and bring an establishment of the kingdom on, on earth? Then, you must conquer a kingdom within. It's called self. He says, so then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Your, your natural, your nature, your, your human nature, self, will never allow you to yield to the laws and the will of God when God says I'm sending you to Saudi Arabia at the risk of your life self will say no you have to preserve yourself self self preservation self defense isn't it self righteousness all of those things that is a civilization apart from God and thinking that you are free because you allow yourself to express itself you don't know you are a slave men that will walk in power are men that have completely sacrificed self otherwise power will intoxicate them and they say in government that absolute power corrupts absolutely that's the problem with the revivals of those days they were absolutely corrupted by the power that they carried and so you must be dead to self Galatians 2.20 For I have been crucified with Christ Yet not I that live But Christ that lives in me I have been crucified So when Jesus died on the cross He died with our sins on him But then he died with us in him And so Colossians 3 verse 3 tells us For you were dead And your life is hid with Christ in God By faith We died with him we were buried with him 
and we are resurrected to a new life and so romans chapter 6 verse 4 tells us the formula that that thing that happened on the cross this is how to make it a manifestation in your daily life he said therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death that just as christ was raised from the dead he was so dead that he couldn't even raise himself off up again so you die completely to your abilities to your ambitions to your plan and except god helps me if you don't help me where else can i go nowhere nowhere if you don't lift me how else can i rise nowhere nowhere so I, I run to you. So I, I run to you. If you depend on him, sing. So I, I run to you. So I, I run to you. sing it one more time. So I. Normally when you do that, men look at you as weak. Everything, God, 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 God. That's what they, they say. Everything, church, church, church. It looks as if it's an insult to your capacity and your capability as a man to depend on God. Yet, before God, those are the men with strength. Because Jacob didn't have authority all through when he had his two legs. It was when he wrestled with the angel and lost his balance and had to depend on a stick. That was when he received authority. He said, like a prince, thou hast had power with God. Before men, now you are impotent. But before me, you now have power. You are a prince. And the Bible says, he blessed the sons of Joseph, leaning on his staff. Look at the way he blessed them. In Genesis chapter 46, I believe. For the, between 46 to 48, I can't get the chapter now. He said, the God of, the, of my fathers, the angel of the Lord who appeared to me and who walked with me, bless this lad ah that a man can say the angels that walk with me from today let them walk with you and you know the bible says the gift and the callings of god are without that's why he doesn't wield his power anyhow if you are alive in yourself your ambition can crush the plan of god you can become a stumbling block what's the difference between a stumbling block and a stepping stone it's simply perspective because the same peter that said thou art the christ the son of the living god a stone a stepping stone you are peter on this rock i will build my church the same chapter he became a stumbling block he began to rebuke jesus he said don't say that thing that you are going to die jesus said get out get behind me satan when we allow self to be lord over us we become a stumbling block to the move of god god would have done so much in our congregations sometimes it's us our program we box god out of the program we don't allow him space to move and because he's limited i hope god will not ask us to explain on judgment day because many times we have hurt him by limiting his hand the bible says in psalm 78 he said they limited the holy one of israel how many times have god cried because of the limitations we place on him the very instrument he kept to, to exhibit his power. Your unbelief can place a limitation on him. And so we need to die to self. We need to die to anything that seeks to control us. We need to even die to time. 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 I think that's the greatest thing we need to die to. Time. Time. It's not just about coming to church alone. No. Or looking at time. But when you begin to compare yourself with your mates and say everybody is getting married and me i'm not married you are being governed by time you need to die at that point because god will tell you that you people may all be age mates but you are not the same in grace he told jeremiah not a congregation only jeremiah said before you were formed i knew you 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 and i ordained you 
you need to die to time so i repeated the class it's not that i didn't work hard i've been working hard i failed two times i repeated god what is the problem you left every other prayer now you are praying for promotion and god is saying it's not my it's not that i want you to fail but your failing is working out a glory that will be needed in your future and i'm merciful enough not to look at your now i'm looking at the future we need to die to time oh. we need to die to hurrying god to bring his promises to pass you want to help god bring his prophecy to pass the bible says in hebrews 11 the last verse this all died in faith is it written yes not obtaining the promises i believe i don't know whether it's the last verse or where i'm quoting now but i know that verse in hebrews 11 this all died in faith not obtaining the promises but they saw it from afar off and they believed so to them faith is not about getting the job done faith is about staying true to a conviction because in the kingdom is all about convictions 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 it's not about events it's not about activity jesus told peter in john 21 he said when you were young you moved around the way you want now that you are growing old somebody will have to take your hand take you to where you don't want to and the bible says he said this signifying the death he will die and in death glorifying god how does death glorify god i thought hezekiah said in isaiah chapter 37 or 38 hezekiah said the living only the living can praise you the dead cannot praise you in other words make me alive so that i can praise you that's that's the negotiation of self and god answered and when he when he stayed alive the 15 years he lived extra was 15 years of flesh it was in those 15 years that the king the king of babylon sent his ambassadors to him and instead of telling them how god has helped him he showed them his riches everything about him and magnified his own kingdom and he kept god aside and god said okay those things they see they saw they will come back for it it was in those 15 years she he claimed he know more than god only the living can praise you the dead cannot praise you so keep me alive in those 15 years he gave birth to a son called manasseh and manasseh trampled and destroyed all the work of righteousness that he had raised in fact the sin of manasseh was so grievous that when you read jeremiah chapter 15 read verse 16 i believe he was asking a question is it verse 16 or verse 18 he said why is my pain perpetual why is my own like this why are, are you to me a god that cannot answer right like an unreliable stream he was praying and god didn't answer because they were in captivity god replied his question in verse 4 he said because of the sin of manasseh that's the reason why the pain of an entire nation is this heavy that's the reason why a nation went into captivity because of one man one man born in a season of self 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 there are many things we need to die to every man you see anointed with the grace and the power of god in any field what you are seeing is a report card of death and so the glory i seen is commensurate to the death that he has died there are some deaths that will it will it will malform your life forever You can't go back to it you want a mighty prophetic ministry are you ready to keep a prayer routine for the next 20 years even in sickness are you ready to follow the will of god for your life and appear to be strange to the people around you and god will not even be available to answer them at that time and i tell people when god seems not to answer your adversaries is because he's busy about your future and he has no time to answer your adversaries when that future manifests it will answer them god was not created to answer us he created creation to answer for him you didn't get what i said the children of israel cried in the book of judges chapter 6 in the agony of the midianites what was the answer god came to gideon he said mighty man of value what do you see they do here Oh yeah. We must die to self. Can God trust you with what He gives to you? 
Can God walk with you as a trusted partner? Can God give you resources and trust that you will forever live to serve his purpose? Can God trust that there will never be an appetite to take from him what he has given you? That's why he says you have become robbers. He gave you to hold for him and release when he needs it. And now you converted it to your own because it is, it is much. You know, I heard the story of Dr. Paul Lenenche one time. And I heard that he and his wife prayed and said, God, if you want to bless anybody within our territory, make us your storehouse. In other words, let the blessing pass through us to them. You know what that means? Pass through you to them. So you can have a million and God say, this one million, there's a church doing a church project. Go and give them everything. When you come back, tell your wife after three days. No, because if you tell her on the first day, she can still convince you to go back and say, we didn't hear God. When God says, okay, buy a car every month for 12 months for my servants that I will show you. Because many of us think, okay, people who give, ah, they are rich. That's why they give. True kingdom giving is sacrificial. It increases as it continues. There are some givings God will say is for a lifetime. How does he say a lifetime? He will not tell you when to stop. You just discover after five years you are still doing the same thing. And God didn't tell you to change. And nobody sees the pain in the secret. But when God begins to glorify that man, people can criticize. That's the reason why when people criticize you because God lifted you, it doesn't bring you down. Your debt has paid the price for you to stay there. Men that are dead to self. And finally, I wish I could talk about the last one, but I can talk about it tomorrow. Change the key, please. Men that will walk in power and authority and advance and establish the kingdom on the earth are men that understand spiritual warfare. Men that understand the business of warfare. Men that understand how to conquer kingdoms and take over territories. Men that understand the side of God that says he is a man of war. Men that are jealous over the territories of God on earth and are ready to defend and secure it. Men that know how to contend with the gates of darkness in a family. Men that are ready to challenge the altars of Baal and don't care if it will take them all their lifetime for as long as God be exalted in this family. Men that are ready to walk into a territory and challenge confronting principalities. Today we don't have too many people that understand warfare in the body of Christ. Small challenge, everybody begins to shake. Small battle, a witch just tossed you an arrow. A dart, not even an arrow, they just toss you. It's their way of saying welcome to the neighborhood. So they just send it to see if you are active. And the person runs to God say, God! Why have you forgot? Don't ever say why to God. Though, because he never answers by experience. He has never answered why. The day God answers you why, come and tell me what he said. Because all the why I've been asking him since he never answered me till today. Look through scripture, Genesis to Revelation. There was no why God answered. Joshua fell down before God when they lost before I. He said, God, why have you allowed your, your people to be defeated? Wah, 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 wah. He cried. God is not moved by emotions. So after he had lied down there for a while, God said, come, stand up from there. Why are you crying? There's sin in the camp. Get rid of it. Warfare. Somebody say warfare. How many of you know that the Bible is clear to tell us that in this world we are not alone? That there are forces we contend with. We are in front or behind enemy, enemy lines. There's a film like that behind enemy lines. It's like we have been dropped from a, a, a helicopter into a territory, a jungle where the enemy is around. Where there are landmines everywhere to be activated. And so it says, put on the whole armor of God. Every Christian in the last day must, on, must be a combatant Christian. You must understand warfare. During the revivals in American history, I think in the revivals of the early 19th century, one of the things they did was that they shared gun and Bible to soldiers. 
uh, yeah, it was, it was revival. You know what it means? You fight with one hand, the physical, and you fight with the other hand, the spiritual. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. One of the things that God opened to me early enough when I started ministering this time, I'm glad because I've been trained. I think if I go to another territory, I understand the logic now. Was warfare. Praying and praying and praying, no move, nothing happening. Limitations everywhere. Yet God will say, I will do this, I will do that. Ah, ah. Then one day God, God, God heard my prayer and decided to take me somewhere. He said, fast for me. And every day you fast in the evening, don't break the fast. Trek around a sizable portion of this of your city and pray and take over the atmosphere. Legislate for me. I thought it was easy till I started it. You are just hearing it now, but it happened in 2018. So you go from post office, you trek down to the airport. All that place down to that Air Force place on foot, no nape, and trek back. I'm telling you, real story. I'm standing before the altar of God. I can't lie to you. There are, I think there are too many pounds I've shared through that. Sometimes when I come back to eat is a problem. And then you go the second day. And I finished the fifth day. I came back. The fifth or the sixth day. I came back and in the night I was praying by 12. And all of a sudden, because of how light I was because of the fasting. The flesh had been dead enough for my spirit to connect. And I don't know what kind of a vision that is. But I was praying in front of my room. And then all of a sudden, I was standing in front of Welcome to. That Welcome to Meduguru in front of uh, Bruno Express. At the same time, I can't explain to you. It's the power of God. It's in the realm of the spirit. I can't, can't tell you how. I was in two places at the time. The same place where you have that pedestrian bridge. As if I knew one year later there will be a bridge there. I was standing exactly there. So 2019 when I came out one day and saw the bridge, I said, ah, this is exactly where I stood. And I looked on that welcome to and I saw two dragons heavily wrapped around that place. Their eyes are as big as the head of a man. I've said this story before. And when I zoomed in the spirit to their eyes, I could see writings. It was like a computer analyzing data. And the spirit of god was showing me the names the date of birth of people their occupations families he told me these are the principalities over the gates of the city i said god what is their job then now all this talking was without my mouth and i can't tell you where god was answering me from this is what warfare will take you to i said god what is their job there why this analysis and all he said what they do is that they, they mount the gate because Bornu State is a gate in Nigeria. I hope you know Islam came through this, con this state. It's a spiritual gate in Nigeria. He said so what they did is when that thing came into Nigeria, this state was established. The, what you call the Kanem Empire was a, so it's stretching beyond Bornu to Yobe. That's why it's the same atmosphere when you go here and there except you don't pray he said what they do is they have one mission to ensure that the way everybody comes is the way they will go so if you come broke you will leave broke you cannot you even if you rise and thrive and prosper except by an understanding that comes from heaven you will live the same way with all due respect, check the statistics of people who have left here to do, go and do ministry elsewhere. Check the level of their results. With all due respect. With all due respect. Check the people who did anything great here. Where they are now. Is it not yesterday be being better than today? Is it their fault? It's the understanding of gates. Gates gates and an average christian just feels that praying in tongues one hour every day reading their bible is okay at least i know god but how much of the kingdom of god do you understand in your territory how much space can you contend for and take over for god people will not listen to you just because you have a good preacher no 
there is there is a battle you must have won in the spirit and then your voice becomes the voice jesus took the keys of hell and death and because of that he told them all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me therefore go that's why he was bold enough to say i will build my church and the gates of hell that it was a prophecy he was making that when i'm done dying on that cross and i go to hell and defeat de the devil and his cohort he said i will come with so much dominion and authority that no gates gates are principalities they are not physical gates they are spirits that are assigned to rule over territories there are spirits that rule if you enter a place where you see bars drinking bars everywhere there is a spirit over that place enslaving the entire territory and the sons of men that they must like alcohol so a man is running into depth but he can't stop you see why it takes deliverance to break out of addiction I know the doctor told you you can exercise yourself and but let me tell you the truth true deliverance from addiction is true deliverance case closed there has to be a power mightier than the power that holds you bound he said the prince of this world come to me but he found nothing in me when i got out of that encounter i came back to where i was i opened my eyes in the physical and i saw a man standing before me wearing black all true that's when I know that the press, Satan has presence. Evil is a... You've not seen evil, I'm telling you. <laughs> that one you feel, you see your hair, hair on your body stands. No, if a real demon walks into where you are, the fear can kill. They don't even... The fear can kill. The, that's why the Bible says it's called the spirit of fear. That we have not been subject unto the spirit of, of bondage to fear. It's a prison when that presence of evil comes around you it can enslave it will make you afraid of the environment you can't pray again at night because you don't want to disturb your neighbors brother you are you are controlled by spirit that thing that fear you were praying when you were in your last house you came to your new house you, you can no longer pray at night there's something wrong there's warfare and you are not aware that you're in a in a battle situation ukraine knew that if russia come against them they had to be ready many of the things we, we don't understand are just experiences of battles already happening there are believers that, that, that keep coming in they are victims of all kinds of battles and the bible says we do not see our signs psalm 4, 74 verse 9 he said we do not see our signs there is no longer anyone any prophet who can tell us how long the reproach will hold reproach does not just come like that there is a prince called captivity he led captivity captive he was a demon a prince it's not just a scripture you think it was people he was leading no when he say he led captivity captive that captivity is a prince that captured everybody in hell he had to bound that prince and take him away until today that prince is still ruling in the life of many people he's still ruling over territories he's still ruling over nations there are some nations that their their currency is almost toilet paper They've done everything. There are some so-called Christian nations that their economy keeps de depleting by the day. There has to be men that understand warfare. This thing is, the fight is not physical, it's spiritual. You, you notice there's a witch in your environment. You want to go and contend with them physically. They may not answer you, but that may be the last thing you say. Except you understand warfare. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon snakes they are snakes but it's because you have power that nothing evil shall hurt you but if you don't have that understanding your last step will be your last some of we think that everybody around us they are friends they are human beings no it's not everybody like that not everybody you see in your city are human beings there are different kinds of species there are mixed breeds huh demons are disembodied spirits the Bible says the sons of God came down and had a fear with the daughters of men and produced another generation. Some people are not witches. They are just another species. You don't understand them. It's a mixture of a spirit and a human together. Somebody you see him so stubborn, he doesn't listen to anybody. You bring him for a fire service. After that service, he still goes back to misbehave. You are, you are dealing with another species. The contention will be spiritual. I read the story of a man called Lester Sumrall about a miracle boy 
a story about an invisible boy that was the story he went to preach in a nation called philippines and in that nation there was this family in that place where he was the boy will suddenly disappear and they will not see him till after many days he will come back where did you go to he was so stubborn that they took him to a, 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 a psychiatric home a place for mad people they could not tame him he could beat everybody around him small and then they took him <clears throat> hey, it's not every stubbornness you see that's why the bible says stubbornness is worse than the sin of witchcraft so that person you see that is a nuisance needs help there is a force there is a spirit operating behind believe it or not you see people fall sick up and down it's like people in their family take turns there is a spirit called the spirit of affliction he's just expressing himself every anyhow until he's bound they can't be free there are some healings you don't pray for until deliverance has happened he said i saw satan fall like lightning that's the reason why the demons were subject to you in my name and when lester samra prayed for this boy all of a sudden that spirit left him and he became a young child again rose up to become a man of god another time he went to he was in philippines in fact this story is everywhere online it was a story that shook the philippine nation and the whole world there was a girl in jail a prostitute she was born to a witch a fortune teller mother was a fortune teller and a witch imagine that kind of background after fraternizing with spirit the mother died when she was at a young age of 12 then she now entered into prostitution and, and upgraded her version of, of, of being possessed. So the spirits came back because the mother had already cut covenant. You think you just find wealthy people up and down. You think all the money is legitimate money. Some of them drink blood in the night. You don't know where they go to. Some of them go to herbalists. Some of them go to all kinds of people. Why do they travel to their village at, that, at a particular time? There was a star in this nation many years ago a yoruba rapper you know who i'm talking about what is he singing we don't know but the guy blew everywhere his song was everywhere he rose to fame overnight yet people didn't know that he told his story to his fame in one of his songs before he died he said i've washed my head with soap in the interpretation of yoruba well, but we don't know we sing the song don't be so so all these guys you are celebrating how are you sure their hands are clean i leave you to think about that and this girl will be in the jail when the demons come to her they will see literal bite marks on her body as though an animal beat her and nobody could handle her situation doctors were flown into the nation there was nothing they could do lester somro stepped into the jail and the demon left her and that became revival that was the only miracle he needed to do through god when he went to the mayor the mayor said what do you want he said i've been building without your permission he said you are permitted now take money he said okay i want to preach in all the churches in this city he said go ahead and that revival shook the philippines browse about him lester somro i pray i pray that god will raise lester somros here a daring man of faith one time he went to a nation to go and preach and the herbalist was contending with him so he, just, he knew he had to deal with the herbalist and after dealing with the herbalist everybody in the village surrendered to god just the way paul had to deal with elements brothers and sisters do we want god to use us to walk in his power and in his glory and to see nations bow as i come to an end tonight we must be men of faith we must be men that are dead to self and only alive in God. It is such men that can understand spiritual warfare. It is such men that can stand in front of battle lines like the mighty men of David. The Bible says one of them stood in a field, one alone against an entire battalion of the enemy. And he fought with his sword until he brought down an entire army. What did those men know? It was like a record everybody was breaking this one killed 800 men this one killed 300 men what did they know and the bible called them the mighty men of david their secret as i close is in psalms 18 verse 29 it said the lord will light my lamp 
the Lord will enlighten my darkness. Verse 30. For by you, sorry, 28, 29. It says, For by you I run through a troop, and by you I leap over a wall. There is a power in God if you get to know that power, which is Kambal. Demons can flee. Rehad Bonke will go to preach in a village or in a city and help bodies to come from the village. They will retire and come with their juju. So even in the world of witchcraft and occultism, they knew that this one a boss. So when he comes, everybody comes out. And they'll burn all the charms and they will leave and they will not record that anybody died. What did those men knew? Those were mighty princes, mighty men. And God is raising mighty men like Gideons in this place. That's the word tonight before we close. He's raising you as a mighty man of valor. Are you ready to pray? stand up we are going to pray that's all for tonight tomorrow will be the miracle night and impartation but i believe i've challenged us enough to pray we are going to make an altar call before i pray because we have to be safe to pray this prayer the prayer we are going to pray to this night is going to be a prayer of warfare we are going to dethrone every force that has been mounting the gates in your families the forces over this territory so that men can be released so that destinies can be activated some of you have no option but to learn warfare because that's what your ministry is tied around how do i know why is it that before every major breakthrough in your life you go through a lot of stress god is just telling you there is something about warfare and your destiny you have just not learned enough so you need to learn how to be a battle axe that can smite the gates. Because not every gate will open. There are some gates that must be broken. For he has broken the gates of brass and cut asunder the bars of iron. But we need to make an altar call before we close. While you stand, if you are here, and you need to say yes to Jesus, you need to return to the Lord. Perhaps you used to be a Christian but somehow you have slipped off you no longer can look at your life and think that you are enthroning christ in any way or you have a good relationship with god this is a night to make amends let's make amends right now so that when we begin to pray there will be no reprisal attack on you And everybody with all all of us standing i want us to honor this moment before we begin to pray if there are those who need to say yes to jesus let's give them the next 20 seconds wherever they are to lift up their hands to god and be restored back to him come to know him as your lord and your savior the battle with addiction the battle with everything that you are facing can only be brought to an end when you surrender to a king called Jesus. Play major now. And you must surrender to him. Until he becomes Lord over you, he cannot be Lord at all. He needs to be Lord so that you can be saved. And so God is calling tonight for those who need to be saved. Or those perhaps who need to rededicate their life afresh. It's time to mean business with God. I'm tired of playing games. I've been provoked by what I've heard. Wherever you are in the congregation, please lift your hands. And then we are going to pray before we continue. So we say yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. So we say yes, 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 Lord, yes. So we say yes, yes. Last time, let's sing together as a sign of surrender. We say yes. Yes. 
Yes, Lord. Please lift your hands if you are lifting it up wherever you are so we can pray. You want to return back to the Lord or you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. This is where it begins for you. Then you will be enlisted into the kingdom and you can lay hold of your inheritance in Christ which is his power and his authority. Please lift your hand. God bless you. I see a hand behind. If that hand is lifted for salvation, God bless you. God bless you. If you are lifting your hands, just lift your right hand up to heaven. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Forget about everything that has happened before now and surrender to him. Break free from that addiction by surrendering to the Lordship of Christ. If your hands are lifted, I want you to rush to the front quickly. I'm going to pray for you right now. And then we are going to do the final prayer and we are done. Please, if you need to join them, join them before this session is over. Don't wait for others to come. God came for you. Jesus is standing right now at the door of your heart. He wants to reconcile you to him. Say yes to him and that is your ticket to victory. Say yes to him now and let him use you for his glory. I'm going to pray for them now but I feel that there are at least two people in the congregation that God is talking to around. You can feel a nudging in your heart. Let's have you return to the Lord now. Surrender to Him. And let your life be rebranded again. Let a new walk with Jesus start. A walk of victory, of grace and power. So please, if you are any of those two, make sure you come out before they say the final Amen. Those of you in front, I congratulate you for coming out, for surrendering to the Lord. I want you to put your right hand on your chest and repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. Forgive me of my sin. I believe that you died and rose again that I'll be saved. Thank you for saving me. I receive, therefore, eternal life in Jesus name now lift that right hand up to heaven father I pray Jesus that you will save these ones by the forgiveness of their sins and by the insemination of eternal life into their spirits I declare from today that they are born again and they receive the victory over sin over Satan over death over hell and the grave forward ever and backward never with you forever in Jesus mighty name Amen and Amen now while I'm talking to you people in front there's one of you that I see God breaking a hold over your life a demonic hold I don't know if this is like an addiction but I just sense the power of God touching and erasing that area in your life meanwhile all of you in front thank you for making this decision please help that lady i just sense the power of god working in her life god bless you and this is what i want you to do look at me all of you in front i want you to just turn to your left there is a lady that is going to wave to you our counselors will attend to you and then talk to you pray with you and get your contact we want to be praying for you and following your new life with god it's a new beginning for you in jesus name and amen Please celebrate God for them as they just follow our counselors back. Just follow the lady. Just stay with her when she's fine. Just guide her, please. Just guide her. Because God is working. Can we pray for five minutes and we are done? I think I'll just suspend the ministration to tomorrow. Let's just pray and close here five minutes and we are done tonight we are going to pray a prayer of warfare we are going to bring down every throne that has been established against the purposes of god in our lives change the play now let me tell you something about 
warfare by experience is it raining by experience when the children the heaviest release of angelic intervention in the life of believers is in seasons of heated prayer intercession and spiritual warfare i've been privileged by god to see some few angels there are some angels that are more fearful than demons there are some angels that are created to destroy Tonight, if we pray in agreement before we leave, God will open the heavens and release some of those angels. There are altars in families that must fall. Five minutes of prayer will do it this night. And then we are done. Tomorrow night is the night of miracles and impartations. Meanwhile, as we pray, the power of God will come on some people like a garment. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Now, I'm telling you because I see angels now standing within the eyes and holding those garments. As we pray, they will begin to clothe some people. Because there are some people called into intercession and warfare. There are some people who need to be anointed for the next level of spiritual contention and warfare. And you need that grace to come upon you. So two things happen as we pray. As we pray, angels are going to be released and people will be clothed with power. You will know that the power has come on you because you will never be the same. You will begin to feel like there are two of you in one body. I know what I'm telling you. I know the power of God. Are we ready to pray? I want you to hold hands with somebody, just two, two. Not more than two. Not more than two, just two, two. We are going to agree and wage war against the forces of hell that has arisen to contend with the purposes of God. I hope this mic is good. With the purposes of God over families, over territories, over ministries. Listen, listen, just hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm seeing something now. I'm seeing something now. I'm just, I'm seeing something right now. I'm seeing, the power of God is already moving. I'm seeing something. I'm seeing boxes with padlocks. And God said, God said those padlocks must be broken because the ministry of some people are inside. The destinies of some people are inside. It has to be expressed. Do you believe what we are going to do? I promise you no ministration. Five minutes and we are done for tonight. The ministrations are tomorrow. Can we agree and declare, let the gates of hell be uprooted and destroyed by the power in the name of Jesus. Every force, every principality that has withstood the purposes of God in families, in territories, in churches. No, you are not praying like I want you to. In Jesus' name. Wait, wait. <laughs> no, we are not we are not you know, we are not praying like I, I'm not saying I'm not just talking about shouting. We are not yet praying with revelation. Listen, listen. How many of you are from the south? Southern Borno, lift your hands. Now, there's an angel that the Lord is going to release now to that portion of this state. Altars are going to be destroyed. And ushers, you will help because you are going to see violent manifestations now. Now, this is, this is what you will do. Bring those people out for me. Are you hearing me? Ushers, are you hearing me? Are we ready to pray? altars are going to be destroyed the powers of shrines will be deactivated now lift your voice and wage war wage war wage war in the name of jesus you pray allow the ushers to do their work i can't hear you saints of god I can't hear you, saints of God. Just bring them out for me. We are going to find violent manifestations. Just bring them for me. Deliverance will happen this night. Every altar, bring them to the front here. Every altar, 
of power. What if it is flowing now? Every gate that has terrorized the children of God, every gate, every gate of darkness, it is right now. It is right now. We stand in the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, the King of Kings, the one who is dead but is alive forevermore. And in the name of Jesus, let gates be destroyed. Let altars be destroyed. Let altars be arrested. Let those spirits be arrested. Are you praying? Are you praying? Father, we release angels to the southern part of the mystery. And I challenge altars. I stand as an apostle over the state of Bonu and I declare every altar, every shrine, every gate, every part of darkness from the southern region of Bonu State be crushed now, be crushed now, be crushed now. I stand in my office. Let the angels, the apostolic and prophetic watchers begin to move, begin to move, confront gates. Confront spirits, arrest altars, break yokes. Yes, 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 yes. Use them now. Use those destinies now. Every ministry that has been kept on that chain, on that hot lock, on that lock I do, I break those chains, I break those chains, I break those hot locks. Let those ministries be used now. Just bring them out. Something wrong, just something wrong. of delay, delay marriages, delay careers. I arrest that spirit now and by the power of the Holy Ghost. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. I break your hold. I break your hold. Let 
Hold on, hold on. Just, just, just hold on. Every lady, please lift your hand. If you are single, if you are single, just lift your hand. I'm sorry, I said no ministration, but the Holy Ghost is moving now. It's not to everybody, but there are ladies that need to be handpicked by God. I want to arrest the spirit of delay over marital settlements. At the count of two, let the spirit of delay that has caged the marital destinies of any lady here, at the count of three, let them go and live their lives. One, two, three, go, go in the name of Jesus. We arrest them now. There's no hiding place. I release the baptism of fire, fire, fire. I invoke the authority by whom I stand and which I represent. And I declare, let the angels of fire sweep across this wall now, from the left to the right. I declare, let there be no hiding place for demons. Let every demon spirit be arrested by fire, by fire. I'm sorry our ushers are overwhelmed. Some people who can help us, please. In Jesus' name. You are glorious. So glorious. You are glorious. So glorious. You are glorious. So glorious. In Jesus' name, it's time. It's time, it's time, it's time, it's time. There's a spirit. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Just leave those under the anointing. It's time. I just, I felt a wind. There's a spirit responsible for poverty and impoverishment in families. I see bundles of money tied and hidden somewhere. I'm going to arrest those spirits and the wealth of families will be restored. At the count of three, shout Jesus at the top of your voice. Father, every spirit that has tied the wealth of families here, every spirit that is responsible for impoverishment and poverty, that has reduced the world status of families and individuals at the mention of your name let the spirit be arrested and let there be an instant restoration let treasures of darkness be released and hidden riches in secret places in the name of jesus are you ready to shout that name one two three shout jesus let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go. I arrest you, false spirits. Take your hands off your finances. Take your hands off your wealth. Release them now. Father, we give you praise for tonight. Let your name forever be glorified. Let your name be exalted. Mama, the Lord showed me now in a vision. Your husband, just stay there. Something has been broken. And in three months, exactly three months, within three months, I see something mega coming to your family. And I see God changing the story of your family. 
And God said, listen, listen, this is the word, listen. God said he's restoring the fortunes of the past with a greater fortune. And he's causing you to walk out and amass a wealth that is going to surpass your entire knowledge. The two of you, this is the word of the Lord to you. In three months, the hand of God is coming on your family. And I see things changing. I see something heavy coming for your husband. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Please lift your hands to heaven. Lord, we thank you tonight. I'm free indeed. Through Christ I'm free. No chains are holding me. If you are true. I'm free indeed. To Christ I'm free indeed. Was blind but now in peace. Is who I seek to be. One more time say I'm free indeed. In Christ I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me. Is who I seek to be. Lift your hands. I decree and declare from tonight that as you depart from this place, you are going with a heavy installment of the power of God over your life. Everything that has limited you, you are going back to confront it now. I pray for a baptism of the impartation of faith upon everyone here present. Faith to do exploits, mighty things for the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Destinies have been activated. Destinies have been released. Wealth is being restored. Careers are coming back to life. Every ministry that has been under restriction by the kingdom of darkness, I release it now. I release it now. Step into another level of fire and grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Before the end of this conference, let a fresh anointing come on your life. Listen, can I declare this? Every expectation that is hanging, every consignment of yours that is hanging, by angelic intervention, we clear it now. And we release it to your hands. Before the end of this conference, everything that is yours that has been hanging is released to your hands now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And Father, I stretch my hands to those that are in front. And I declare by a mighty move of your fire and your power, anyone that is still on that chain of darkness, any demonic spirit that is still hiding in their lives or in their families, I command you to be exposed by fire and I command you to let them go. Go in the name of Jesus. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. We give you glory. We give you all of the honor you are the Lord as we close one more time lift your voice we are you are the Lord let your name be glorified you are the Lord you are the Lord let your name be glorified oh, glory
Wave your hands to the King of Kings. What a mighty, mighty move tonight. Hallelujah. I appreciate every one of us for spending time to be here to the end. God bless you in full package in the name of Jesus. All our guests, you are welcome. I celebrate all the ministers. Thank you so much. God bless you. Tomorrow night is the night of miracles and impartation. Okay. Let me show you something. Put this hanky on her face. She'll stop. She'll be quiet in 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Give me back. Tomorrow night is the night of miracles and impartation, as well as healings. I want you to come with anyone that is challenged, anyone that needs God as a matter of urgency. Come with life-threatening situations. I thought this hall would be small, but it looks it's almost looking big. But let this place be littered with the people that are hungry to see God move. There's going to be a release of the latter and the former rain. It's going to rain in this place. Not physically, but here in the spirit. And greater things will happen. Many of you will step into new levels in your destiny. Ministries will be activated afresh. Mantles in your families that have been obscured will be revealed and released to you. And the name of Jesus alone will be exalted. Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever.